official. Sports related injuries. These chronic ailments, which wear on mind and body, have us spending over $65 billion a year. Join us on an amazing medical journey into a world of hope for successful management of pain. It's the next LifeQuest special, Conquering Pain. Friday at 8. Beverly's back. Monday, September 18th. Eyewitness News, weeknights 6 and 11. KYW-TV, Channel 3. Hi, I'm Eleanor Jean Hendley. Join me for the most interesting guests and the best of entertainment on City Lights at its new time, Saturdays at 7. More sports. More highlights. Channel 3, the sports team that gives you more. Jealousy that goes beyond human nature tonight on Evening Magazine. Did Mr. Universe get muscled out of judging Miss America? Entertainment Tonight is all pumped up for Thursday, September the 7th, 1989. Hello again, everybody. I'm Mary Hart. And I'm John Tesh. Actor Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to be a judge at the Miss America contest, and his wife, TV journalist Maria Shriver, is working on a story about beauty pageants. So what could go wrong? Plenty. It's what some reports say is a career collision in one of the world's most famous marriages. Maria Shriver, the journalist, is preparing a report for her show, NBC's Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow, on women who use plastic surgery to improve their chances in beauty pageants. Maria's husband, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was expected to be a judge in this year's Miss America pageant, which is also on NBC. But now Arnold says he can't do it. Today, one tabloid says Maria sensed a conflict of interest and then forced Arnold to back out. It won't affect us. Uh, we have a full complement of very fine judges. We have seven celebrity judges and seven preliminary judges. But we're obviously disappointed because we think that Mr. Schwarzenegger would, would have been a very fine addition to our panel. He's a very popular person in the country and we're disappointed that he uh, cannot do it. Schwarzenegger's spokesperson says commitments to his new movie Total Recall, not pressure from his wife, will keep Arnold away from Atlantic City. And Schwarzenegger says he never guaranteed the Miss America people he'd be there anyway. The Miss America pageant will be broadcast on NBC a week from Saturday. The plastic surgery segment being put together by Shriver is scheduled to be shown on Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow, also on NBC, Friday, September 15th. They are Hungary's most famous export since goulash, and they've had Hollywood in a stew ever since. The Gabor sisters and their outspoken mother are a show business family event, and our inside story for today. They are the fabulous Gabors, Jaja, Eva, older sister Magda, and mother Jolie. Now, of course, the public is most aware of Jaja and Eva, so naturally a sibling rivalry has developed over the years. Sisters do fight, but after all, blood is thicker than water. And we love each other. We have different point of views of different things. Well, she just doesn't understand me, and I don't understand her. You see, we are two different people. The Gabors actually form a tightly knit foursome with a real love that has bonded them in times of difficulty. Born to a wealthy family in Budapest, Hungary, the arrival of the Gabor sisters meant the end of an aspiration held dear by their mother. I wanted to be, when I was very young, an actress. And I was afraid I'm too old to be an uh, actress and with three children, so I gave it up. What Jolie Gabor did was turn her attention to her daughters. She's very tough to us. If I would marry the king of China or the, I don't know who, she always said there's something better around. They always told them, I want you children, that you are somebody, somebody more than the other girls, and he, he became somebody. The Gabor sisters certainly did become somebody. Fleeing World War II Hungary, they took America by storm, starring in nightclubs, stage, and screen. Magda retired after marrying her first husband. Zsa and Eva, with 13 husbands between them, never slowed down at all. And all the while, keeping a close eye was their mother, Jolie. Even now, they don't do nothing without my advice. They call me up and, mother, mother, give me a quick advice. We talked to her twice a day from any place in the world. You know, she's the kind of a mother who is never there, but if you do need her, she's there. Of her three daughters, Mother Jolie describes Magda as the intelligent Gabor sister. 
Magda's speech is limited due to a debilitating injury the family says she suffered some 10 years ago. Ava, her mother says, is the thoughtful sister. Zsa, Zsa according to Jolie, is the temperamental one. She's too temperamental, you know. She was born for the newspaper people. Everybody reports that they come after her. Zsa, Zsa's recent arrest by a Beverly Hills policeman seems to bear her mother out. But with an outpouring of support that includes designer t-shirts, Zsa, Zsa isn't scared. If I go to jail, my dear boy, I mean that. The whole America is going to be uh, laughing stock. If Zsa goes to jail because a son of a gun like that beats the hell out of me, then there's something very wrong in America. Then I would like to go to jail because it was the best publicity I ever had. Of course, the first to rally behind Zsa was her family. Hearing her point of view, it's disgrace how they handled her. He was very sharp to her for a little mistake. While Zsa, Zsa is happily married to eighth husband, Prince Frederick von Anhalt, of West Germany, Ava is happily unmarried to Merv Griffin, the longtime boyfriend with whom she predicts no wedding vows. I've been married before, and I have never chosen the right person. It seems I've chosen the right one now. We have such a good time for so many years. I don't want to shake the boat. <laughs> Compared to Zsa, Zsa Ava leads a calmer, though no less glamorous, lifestyle. She also happens to run the largest wig manufacturing company in the world. And so the Gabors are doing quite well, thank you. In Palm Springs, this is home to Mother Jolie, and this is home to Sister Magda. It may appear that for the fabulous Gabors, wealth is taken for granted. Not so. When they fled Hungary, they say they had nothing. And so the Gabors made it because of one important trait. We are hard-working women, and we like it. We like to work. We don't want any hands up. I don't want one hand up. I'd rather die. If you have a goal, and you work, and you're willing to give up things, and you work, you can make it. So what's the secret to the Gabor family togetherness? Jolie Gabor explained it in the introduction to her memoirs, quote, I have three beautiful daughters, and we all love one another. They don't need anything from me, and I don't need anything from them, and that's probably why we still all love one another, end quote. On our Inside Story tomorrow, is Hollywood too liberal, delivering left-wing messages in movies and television shows? There seems to be a bunch of prima donnas in Hollywood that say politics is fine for everyone else, but we're on a pedestal, and you have no right to criticize us. And the answer is yes, we do. Does Hollywood play politics with your entertainment? Our inside story tomorrow on Entertainment Tonight. Coming up next, find out why MTV got an X rating for its music video award show. And later, Tina Turner reveals her private dream for a new career. A dry idea. A dry idea. Dry idea. Did you ever notice that the drier something is, the cleaner it is? A dry idea. A dry idea. Dry idea. That's why nothing keeps you drier than dry idea. So you feel clean. <laughs> really clean. Dry idea. Our idea of clean. Real meat in jerky treat strips dogs go jerky for. Wipe your feet. She looks great. And that outfit wouldn't lie. If she eats one more thing, I'll scream. Oh. Oscar Mayer oven roasted turkey is just 25 calories per luscious slice. Someone here already knows that. So go ahead. Just 25 calories a slice. Eternity. Eternity. Calvin Klein. Eternity. Now your gift with any $35 Eternity purchase at all Macy's. Afraid you can't afford the sleek styling and high performance of a Honda Accord? Don't be such a chicken. With just one trip to your local Honda dealer and less than $12,000, you can afford to fly the coupe. The Honda Accord Coupe. Right now, you can buy one from your local Honda dealer for under $12,000. And that's not a lot of scratch. Beverly's back. Monday, September 18th. Eyewitness News, weeknights 6 and 11. KYW-TV, Channel 3.
for a free guide to the best of what is made in America. Write Travel for Tomorrow Box 2100, Lexington, Kentucky, 40594. MTV, the music video channel, likes to promote its wild rock and roll image. But on its annual video award show last night, one performer was so obscene he's been banned from MTV forever. It was one incident in a night to remember. From all appearances, it was a normal night, with MTV's usual offbeat blend of rock and rollers, presenters, comedians... Are you doing me to hold this? No, I'll hold it. And couples. She's awesome, isn't she? Look at these legs. No, don't. Thank you. Inside, Madonna opened the show with her first TV performance in five years. But comedian Andrew Dice Clay hit a sour note. I grabbed onto a set of... The comedian surprised MTV with obscene jokes they say he hadn't used in rehearsal, and the material went out uncensored over the air. But stealing the show was the night's big winner. It's Paula Abdul. It's Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul! In all, choreographer-turned-singer Paula Abdul won four awards, including Best Dance and Best Female Video. I've had the dream of doing this. I didn't know when it would happen, and to be honest with you, I didn't know it would happen in this big way. Elvis Costello was the surprise winner for Best Male Video, and Cher had yet another surprise for the audience. She appeared in the same brief outfit that originally caused such a fuss on MTV that her video was only aired at night. Host Arsenio Hall had a little fun with that. It's past 9 o'clock, ain't it? The Rolling Stones appeared live by satellite from their concert in Philadelphia. Other highlights, George Michael was presented the 1989 Video Vanguard Award with a special mention of Michael's work as director of his own videos. I'm pleased because um, direction is something that I've been really interested in for uh, four or five years. The final surprise of the evening, Neil Young, who won Best Video of the Year with This Notes for You. The video was originally banned by MTV for its commercial references. And when Young tried to accept, no one could hear him. There's nothing like a live show, huh? Other winners last night included Guns N' Roses in the category of Best Heavy Metal, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Best Rap, and Best New Artist Living Color. For Cheers, a mix of fantasy and reality was the perfect brew for an upcoming episode. The fantasy was the 100th anniversary of the imaginary bar. The reality was a politician out to boost his city's image. How do you do, Your Honor? Do I'm Rebecca Howe. Welcome to the 100th anniversary of Cheers at 112 Beacon Street. Mayor Raymond Flynn plays himself in this episode of Cheers. The plot calls for him to help celebrate the 100th anniversary of the bar, offering his personal congratulations. In real life, Flynn is making his first ever attempt at acting. I think this may be a career right here, uh, at the end of the career, I should say. Uh, you know, this is uh, exciting. It's uh, a lot of hard work. But uh, I think it was well worth it, this one time. We haven't had the honor yet, Your Honor. Uh, I write to you, you know, about once a week. I'm just one of those guys. You, you might remember my name. It's Clifford Clavin. Clavin, Clavin. Why does that name ring a bell? Your Honor. Oh, my God. I'm like, he's the one. Leave his arms. What do you mean, buddy? No, hey. No, you guys are some mistake here. I'm not a crazy fanatic. I work for the post office. Yeah, he's the guy. Hey, come on, tell us. Mayor Flynn took on the role, he says, as a bit of PR for the city of Boston. It attracts a lot of business and tourism to our city, so I felt it was uh, totally appropriate to be part, in the, part of the special celebration. And again, this is my debut in this kind of business. Well, Cheers begins its eighth season on NBC September 21st. The episode featuring Boston Mayor Flynn will air November 2nd. Paradise is one of two westerns airing on network television this season, and the producers wanted to start their show off with a big bang. So for ammunition, they brought in some hired guns from great westerns past. Buenos dias, amigo. Two legendary 50s TV cowboy heroes, Gene Barry as Bat Masterson and Hugh O'Brien as Wyatt Earp, come out of retirement on the season opener of Paradise to rescue the series star Lee Horsley from jail. But things go wrong and they wind up jailed themselves. My first instinct said not to open that door. O'Brien was sharpshooting Marshal Wyatt Earp from 1955 to 61. Barry played the debonair ladies' man Bat Masterson from 58 to 61. The uh, fun part of it is uh, 
you know, going back in memory, and uh, those were good days. Both men brought a little of their original series with them from Masterson's Derby to Wyatt Earp's gun. It's a long-barreled, uh, what they call a young rifle. It's a uh, much more accurate weapon than a uh, than Colt 45 because of the extra length of the barrel. Bye-bye. This derby is actually the one that I used on the Bat Masterson show. Now, when I get this on, you'll, you'll know who you're talking to. Both the actors were pleased with the opportunity to play their Western characters, and that's something Lee Horsley says he understands. I think everybody's so excited to do, you know, that Westerns are, are on their way back that I, I think uh, it's like anybody else that people are willing to give their right arm to come back and do a Western. I know, certainly know I was. Paradise makes its season debut Sunday night on CBS. Three deadly sins, lust, greed, jealousy. On the next Evening Magazine, Jealousy. He was very jealous of her. Jealousy can become dangerous. Just as I looked in, I seen him put the shotgun in his mouth. Jealousy that goes beyond human nature tonight on Evening Magazine. More sports. More highlights. Channel 3, the sports team that gives you more. Clover Day at Strawbridge and Clothier. With Clover Day savings on your choice, an RCA TV or VCR, just $299. A 20-inch stereo remote TV with exceptional sound quality and cable capabilities, $299. Or RCA's forehead VCR with on-screen remote programming and superior special effects. Tune in and save on an RCA TV or VCR. Your choice, just $299 at Clover Day. Strawbridge and Clothier. Wouldn't it be great if you could shop for your favorite TV channels and get a free offer? Pick up all the sporting events you like, throw in the best new movies, plus classic films, and get a free offer. Get channels for nature and news. Take Prism, Cinemax, Showtime, the Disney Channel, and HBO. Know what they'd call TV like that? Cable. Call 1-800-TV-CABLE or your local cable company. What's on cable? Everything. And a free offer. The Philadelphia Board of Realtors offers a consumer advisory service for anyone with questions, problems, or complaints about any area of real estate. This 24-hour service is provided by the board at no cost or obligation. Professional counseling and information will be made available to you through members of the board. Call 215-735-2853. All it takes is a phone call. Tina Turner is a remarkable woman, incredibly open for a woman who's been at the top of her field for so long, as she showed me when we spoke recently. Now she's nearly 50, and with an established career as a singer, she told me she has a dream for a new career as an actress. But how the world turns. One day cock of the walk, next to feather dust. The singer's first starring role was in the movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Now Tina Turner tells me she is determined to develop that career. The ultimate dream was to act. So I'm still waiting for that, actually, you see. So while the people were sitting there thinking that they would have me on stage all of my life, I was planning something else. And that's where I'm going to now. Just based on what I have seen thus far of your life and read about you, nothing's going to stop you if you well, really set your mind to it. I've mastered my life as Tina Turner. My career is, is how do you call it? It's a foundation now. I can work on it for as long as I want. But we're talking about starting all over as an actress. You are changing characters. You have to pay your dues there as well. Tina is turning her attention to acting at a time when she says critics are finally recognizing her voice, especially with her new album, Foreign Affair. It's not like a wonderful voice, you know? It's a, an attitude type of voice, you know? And it's, but people are accepting that style for me, finally. And it's, that feels like it's worth all of these years finally to, to, to receive that credibility. There is credibility in numbers. Her first single, The Best, is soaring on the charts. You really don't plan on touring again. However, will you be performing occasionally? Unless there's a real desire to do it from the people I won't tour. It's becoming more and more work 
the work. You see, because I'm not just standing there singing my songs, enjoying them. I can't stand there and do it without dancing. And everybody would be heartbroken <laughs> if you didn't dance. They'd be shocked, you know? <laughs> oh, I don't think they could stand, go through uh, the performance without me moving. And neither could I. You're simply Tina's The Best has climbed to number 47 on the singles chart. Her album Foreign Affair will be released September 19th. In 1974, the Very Special Arts Organization began to create opportunities for people with physical and mental disabilities to express themselves through the arts. Now the efforts of the group are being showcased in a network special spectacular. Taking to the stage on the special are Michael Douglas, U2's Bono, Lauren Bacall, and Kenny Rogers. But the real stars are the young artists with disabilities who join together for the first international Very Special Arts Festival, which celebrates the achievements of physically challenged artists. There is no other piece like you. It is a, a group of kids who deserve not only my help, but everyone else's help, because they struggle on a daily basis at things that you and I take for granted. Part of the special was shot on the lawn of the White House with President and Mrs. Bush in attendance. It was a dream fulfilled for a blind boy from Thailand who once lived on the streets. We are the world, the world. We, we are, are the children. Like all the participants, he's a true inspiration, according to Pearl Bailey. I don't use the word handicap or anything like that because I feel they are handy and they're capped with the grace of God. They are magnificent, really. The Very Special Arts Festival and its programs reach more than one million people nationwide. From the Hearts will air Sunday night on NBC. The British break a top secret American code and the insider shares the details. Hello again. It's choice seatings. Buy one, get one free sale on chairs and recliners. Now until Monday at 9 p.m. When you buy one recliner, you get another one free. That's buy one, get one free. Or buy a recliner and get a chair free. Or buy a chair and get a chair or a recliner free. At choice seating, choose from over 25 styles and 150 fabrics. Prices start at $3.99. The sale's already started. Choice seating. Get the style you want in the fabric you want. Delivered in just 35 days. Somewhere in Manhattan, there's a woman men are dying to meet. There's some psycho woman out there killing guys. Frank Keller may have just found her. I believe in love at first sight. I believe in that. She's a suspect, Frank. Al Pacino. Don't you move! Ellen Barkin. I wonder how we made it through last night in one piece. John Goodman. What are you nuts? You just met her. This is getting out of hand. Sea of Love, rated R. Starts Friday, September 15th at a theater near you. Take a look. For all the specials at Acme this week. Take a look. With coupon, Maxwell House French Roast Ground Coffee, 12 ounce can, $1.79. Also, Maxwell House Instant, 8 ounce jar, $2.99. And two rolls of Kodak 35 millimeter film, only $6.88. Oh, take a look, it's a real surprise. Take a look and leave your eyes. Take a look at an old friend, Acme. a timely reminder that four-wheel drive season is coming and that right now you'll find huge clearance savings or low 2.9 financing on Ranger XLT and Bronco 2 at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. Think about it. Hi, I'm Merlin Olson. It may be hard to believe, but one in three Americans suffer from chronic pain. That's over 70 million people who try and cope with headaches, arthritis, backaches, or sports-related injuries. These chronic ailments, which wear on mind and body, have us spending over $65 billion a year. Join us on an amazing medical journey into a world of hope for successful management of pain. It's the next Life Quest special, Conquering Pain. Friday at 8. Celebrating birthdays today, pianist Michael Feinstein is 33. Actor Corbin Burnson turns 35. Actress Julie Kavner is 38. Singer Chrissy Hind is also 38. 
Actress Susan Blakely turns 41. Pianist Art Ferrante is 67. And actor Anthony Quayle, 76. When the President of the United States speaks, everybody listens, but there are times when they don't understand. Worry not, the ET Insider is here to help. The Insider learns that Reuters, the British version of the Associated Press, has decoded a number of President George Bush's favorite expressions so that they may be enjoyed in English by the English. Let us begin with sports. When the President flubs a golf shot, he calls it a drop kick. When one of his horseshoe tosses falls short, it's a power outage. When the president is playing tennis and shouts, unleash Shang at his doubles partner, that means hit the ball hard. Shang in this reference refers to Shang Kai-shek, once the powerful leader of nationalist China. Please, no hissing. The insider is only trying to perform a public service here. On a personal code level, the president refers to the first lady as Silver Fox, to himself as Mr. Smooth, and to his 11 grandchildren as the Wieners. And when trouble looms on the world horizon, we're talking big trouble, President Bush refers to that as deep doo-doo. The insider believes that the English figured that one out for themselves even before Reuters broke the code. Showman Billy Barty has long prided himself on being a little man with big ideas. His latest is the biggest, a little person's bill of rights. In Hollywood, little people from all walks of life held a news conference. Spokesperson Billy Barty tried to call attention to injustices they face and introduced a new record and video from Where I Stand. Give us that opportunity. Do not judge us on our size, but judge us as human beings. Hello. Gotham Corner Store? Yes, we seem to be down to our last diet cook. Holy thirst quenchers! Diet Coke and Warner Brothers have joined with a caped crusader. This commercial will begin airing in November with a longer version to appear on the upcoming Batman video cassette. And ESPN celebrates 10 years on the air with a 90-minute special. The show, airing tonight, tells the story of how ESPN has become one of the biggest success stories on cable television. In the early days, we weren't doing a lot of laughing. Most of us were crying. <laughs> and drowning in red ink. The big leagues wouldn't play ball with the untested 24-hour-a-day cable network. So they filled the air with Australian rules football and badminton. In 10 years, that has changed. They're in the black, reach over half the homes in the country, and have contracts with the National Football League and Major League Baseball. Chris Berman, one of ESPN's main anchormen, explains their uniqueness. We're talking to sports fans, see? These, th these are people just like me. We have a half hour, we have an hour. The networks do this on a Saturday and Sunday, and they go home for the week. We do it every day. And they do it well, too. Yeah, they do. Much ado about politics in Hollywood. Critics claim the entertainment industry is a liberal machine cranking out messages in movies and TV shows. We'll have that inside story for you tomorrow. Well, Madonna was cranking out the music last night at the MTV Awards ceremony, and here she is once again as we say goodnight with Express Yourself. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy. People who took their jealousy one deadly step too far. Wise guys Ray Sharkey on how fast times almost ruined him, and the millionaire who adopted this small town in just a minute. Dear Chris, this is a nightmare. I wish I'd never left the States. 
I don't believe they threw me in jail for a couple of lousy joints. I thought being an American, they couldn't hold me here. But the embassy says it can't get me out. This isn't America. They have their own laws here. I could be in jail a year before I even go to trial. I'm scared. I don't know when I'm coming home. Drugs. A one-way ticket. A message from the U.S. Department of State. Will this fine September weather continue? That outlook on Nightcast. Tonight, our series on the three deadly sins continues with a look at how jealousy can be so intense that it threatens relationships, marriages, even lives. Then, TV bad guy Ray Sharkey tells how real-life drug abuse and fast times in Hollywood almost drove him off the track of an up-and-coming acting career. And worlds away from Wall Street, this big businessman is helping a tiny town survive with a gift of cold cash. It's all tonight. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jerry Penacoli. Ray Murray has the night off. Tonight, we conclude our special series called The Three Deadly Sins. Over the last two nights, we've talked about lust and greed. And we've seen that when those two emotions get out of control, it can lead people to commit the most serious crimes. Well, tonight, the subject is jealousy. And at some point, almost all of us have felt it. In part, this is the story of one young man and how his jealousy became deadly. His father agreed to talk to us only because he hoped it would help others in the very same situation. We do too, as we look at jealousy, perhaps the deadliest of sins. It is by most accounts a side effect of love, and it seems to creep into almost every romantic relationship. It is that ugly emotion known as jealousy. It happens when two people begin to not only rely on each other, but become convinced that they own each other. Jealousy can make even the most rational people think violent and dangerous thoughts. Jealousy can become dangerous when it becomes irrational and not based on anything happening in reality. Now, it's natural if you see your spouse flirting with somebody to be a little concerned and curious what's going on. But if you and your mind have fabricated this belief that they are already meeting, they're having this affair, they're, they're planning your demise, that is clearly pathological. If you ever come near my family again, I'll kill you. You understand? Fatal attraction, it seems, was a fairly accurate portrayal of obsessive jealousy. Police logs are filled with stories of harassment, even murder, by jealous and rejected lovers. Jealousy is one of the most common and yet one of the most destructive of all human emotions. And while we may be able to recreate jealous situations, and while it may be a common theme in movies and TV shows, nothing is as raw or as cruel as real life. His name was Joey Pratt. At the time of his death, he was 20 years old. For two years, he dated a young girl named Bridget O'Brien. She would die at the age of 17, and together they would leave behind a six-month-old son. It was in this Fishtown neighborhood that Joey Pratt grew up. By all accounts, he was a kid with a good side and a bad side. But on the night of November 1st of this year, it was the dark side, the very jealous side of Joey Pratt that took control. It was on November 1st that Bridget told Joey she was ending their relationship. Apparently, that was just too much for him to handle. He took Bridget to her aunt's house, called his dad, and told him that he was going to end it all. When Joey's father, Gordon, arrived at the house, he grabbed the baby from Bridget's arms, hoping to ease the tension. Instead, he watched in horror as his son suddenly aimed a shotgun at his girlfriend and pulled the trigger. Mr. Pratt immediately called the police. In the meantime, I could hear off and on, Bree, I love you. Bree, I love you. I'm going with you. And I was just getting off the phone, and he turned around, and he says, Dad, I love you. I love you. Say you love me. I said, Joe, you know I love you. And just as I looked in, and I think the baby looked in, it was facing that way. Just as I looked in, I seen him put the shotgun in his mouth, 
Then I heard it go off, and then I seen smoke come out of his mouth. What do you suppose it was that drove your son to do what he did? He was very jealous of her. I do know that. And I think a lot of other people know it, too. She was his and nobody else's. He didn't want nobody to have her. Perhaps the most frightening thing about Joey Pratt's jealousy that night is that his emotions were not all that unusual. Dr. John Kappas has seen hundreds of patients like him. They feel that they own the partner. They bought and paid for him. And what happens when they become rejected, their tolerance just goes completely off kilter. And they become very, very violent. And even after the violence, you know, they're apologetic and, and they're sorry they did it. But violence can turn to murder. If anybody is going through this, the only thing I can say is please try and see or get some help. This is not the answer. Jealousy begins at a very early age. In fact, most people learn it as children in the form of sibling rivalry. As adults, that rivalry is likely to continue, not so much with our brothers and sisters, but with our co-workers. If you work in a competitive environment, you're likely to experience jealousy firsthand, and your reactions may be anything but mature. Jealousy is going to stem from the fact that one co-worker was chosen over you. In other words, the boss prefers the co-worker over you. Again, going back to those childhood feelings that, you know, your sibling is more important. Your sibling has replaced you in their affections. And that's really threatening. That's so overwhelming. Because those childlike feelings are going to be there, and it's only natural you're going to feel hurt that someone else was chosen over you. Now, both of the therapists we talked to agreed that most people are reluctant to seek professional help when they become extremely jealous. Mr. Pratt told us that if his son had done that, as he had begged him to do, that violent night might never have happened. He's made a career of playing the bad guy and almost lost it all when addiction took over. You do a toot or whatever it is you do or you take a drink and you know, it kicks in and you feel great. Meet Ray Sharkey next. If your greatest luxury is having all the options, you'll feel beautiful in the world of Estee Lauder. Visit your Estee Lauder beauty advisor, and with your choice of $12.50 or more, we'll treat you to this free gift, including knowing body cream and two lipsticks. Estee Lauder. It's a beautiful world. This gift is yours through September 9th at all Strawbridge and Clothier stores. It's a kind of rainy day. You want to chase the clouds away, have a little sunshine. Have a little sunshine. Have a bunch, you can have it all. Now you can get the great taste of sunshine with no cholesterol. There's absolutely no cholesterol in virtually all of Sunshine's cookies and crackers. Have a little sunshine, no cholesterol at all. Have a little sunshine. His experience spans our time. He's been an eyewitness to historic moments. Vietnam, Washington, the nation. And in Philadelphia, that experience is unmatched. He listens. He's in touch with our community. Steve Bell, credible, concerned. A voice of experience. A person of heart. Steve Bell, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Free medical testing and consultation will be offered at the Graduate Hospital's annual Fair in the Square, Thursday, September 7th, and Friday, September 8th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Philadelphia's Rittenhouse Square at 18th and Walnut. Physicians and nurses will offer cancer and vision screening, as well as cholesterol, calcium, blood pressure test, and much more. International foods, crafts, and entertainment. Stop by, look around. Proceeds benefit Graduate Hospital. For more information, call 1-800-654-GRAD. 
Actor Ray Sharkey may not yet be a household word, but you might recognize the face. When he played the mesmerizing mobster Sonny Steelgrave on 10 episodes of Wise Guy, one Hollywood director said he was so good in the role that you were sad when the bad guy got killed. Well, that same director was so moved by Sharkey that he cast him in the just-released movie version of Wired, the story of the demise of comedian John Belushi. But these recent professional achievements almost eluded Ray Sharkey as he gave in to the stresses of fame and almost killed himself doing so. The I Was a Drug Addict story has become very familiar in Hollywood, but as our next story shows, no one lived that hell quite like Ray Sharkey. Every day you wake up in the morning, you're, you're like... Put that face on. You put your street face on, your street hair, your street clothes, and you go out there and you act to survive. As a juvenile delinquent and gang member growing up on the streets of Brooklyn, Ray Sharkey created characters to stay alive. As a struggling young actor in Hollywood, he used that same ability to establish a successful career. Gangster extraordinaire Ray Sharkey coming up right after this message. If you love me, I'll pull the trigger. Playing characters with a dark and sometimes dangerous personality, he's earned a reputation as an actor who can create an intense on-screen image. In the series Wise Guy, he played Mafia Kingpin Sonny Steelgrave. His portrayal was a hit with the show's fans, and critics say Sharky has the ability to make unsavory characters likable. It's because I find all the things about these characters that everybody feels that i ray feel you know it's how you look at a woman you look at it the way every guy looks at her you know it's how you uh it's how you take the money out of your pocket you know it's how you spend your money it's how you look at a little kid it's how you befriend someone it's it's a universal theme I sent me here to help you, Junior. Really? Today, at 36, Sharky is a hot property in Hollywood. But he's traveled that road before. In 1980, he was considered a rising young star. Unfortunately, along with success, came a spiraling ride into self-destruction. I like to use the expression that I have uh, been to hell and have kissed the devil's derriere and have made it back to heaven before he even noticed I was gone. For Sharky, drugs and alcohol were the devil, and hell was a place Ray felt he belonged. He says his drug use was an attempt to escape his feeling of inadequacy and the pressures of success. So I took it to the max, which was making a conscious decision about being self-destructive. You know, how will I do it so that it'll look great, you know, on the cover of a tabloid. Hollywood was the perfect place for Sharky to make his suicide dive into self-abuse. Fast cars, fast times, and few friends were the order of the day, and cocaine had become the drug of choice. Uh, what that tells me is we're moving fast, man. And in order to keep up, I gotta move as fast. Uh, mm, uh. After a couple of weeks of not sleeping, you tend to look a little sour. You do a toot or whatever it is you do, or you take a drink and, whew, you know, kicks in and you feel great for that long, you know? And what happens is you start chasing your tail the rest of your life, trying to capture those little moments. That's insanity. Sharky's cocaine habit had reached $500 a day. He had destroyed his career, his marriage, and maybe his future. 40 pounds underweight, he checked into a hospital and began a two-month stay that led to the answers he had been looking for. It's real simple. You're you. I love you. All we have to do is love each other until that person can learn to love themselves. It's like a real simple message that's been around. I, Ray, was incapable of feeling any of those things. And that's when it was time to stop. Today, more than two years later, Sharky is clean and sober, and his career is back on track. In what could be called an ironic twist of fate, he was cast to play a role in the film Wired, the controversial story of John Belushi's life. But you died in the end. Who are you, anyway? My friends call me Angel. I love what it said about the guy, because it was talking about me. You know, and I figured, well, if it's talking about me, it's talking about everybody else. The film is based on Bob Woodward's best-selling book, Wired, which ends with Belushi's early death from a drug overdose. 
Many of Belushi's friends tried to prevent the film from being made, and it's been rumored that some Hollywood power brokers threatened to blackball actors who appeared in the film. However, Sharkey says if you look beyond the controversy, there's an important lesson. I think the message is uh, clear, that if you <laughs> stick needles in your arm, eventually you're gonna die. I don't see it as an anti-drug film per se, as I see it as a film uh, about someone who had an enormous dislike for themselves. By learning to like himself, Ray Sharkey left his drug problems behind. In Hollywood, he's called the Comeback Kid, and he's using his celebrity status to get his anti-drug message across. It's deeper than just, okay, this is a marijuana joint, you know, and that black man over there with the fedora, he's a dealer, you know. That's not what education is. Education is about, this is you. You're a beautiful person. I love you. You know, this is your mom and dad. They may or may not be what you see on television as mommy or daddy, but they're your mommy and daddy. And we're all put here to be together and to share and love each other. And the rest is all about school, buses, football games, da 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 da. You know, and you start that process early on. Uh, that's education. And that's drug education, because it's not about drugs. It's not about booze. It's about what's inside. Sharkey says his wife, model actress Carol Graham, and his infant daughter Cecilia are the main reasons he can now stay clean. Sharkey has been signed to star in a television series called Timothy's File, which will air sometime this fall on ABC. And he's been cast in an upcoming Showtime movie called Neon Empire. Now, tomorrow night, Ray Sharkey, Nell Carter, Ali Sheedy, and others tell Evening Magazine how the Hollywood drug scene is changing from acceptance to intolerance as we look at the lives of addicted stars. When this town was on the verge of bankruptcy, David Bolger made it a half million dollars richer. The man who adopted Fayette, Iowa, next. City, the nation's largest retailer of audio, video, and appliances, is opening four stores in the greater Philadelphia area. We're hiring now. Cashiers and warehouse personnel can earn $5 or more an hour, plus great benefits. Interviews September 11th through 16th at these locations. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 6, or call 215-938-1607 for more information. Join the Circuit City team now. Now, all the sleek, hot street machines you're looking for are parked in one garage. Faba. And look out, the big names are on sale at great Faba prices. Men's Reeboks, Jordash, and Olympians. And jump into women's Reeboks, Jordash, and Olympians. Hi, I'm Merlin Olson. It may be hard to believe, but one in three Americans suffer from chronic pain. That's over 70 million people who try and cope with headaches, arthritis, backaches, or sports-related injuries. These chronic ailments, which wear on mind and body, have us spending over $65 billion a year. Join us on an amazing medical journey into a world of hope for successful management of pain. It's the next LifeQuest special, Conquering Pain. Friday at 8. Two years ago, commercial trawlers developed a program to clean up our oceans of plastic trash. Every year, millions of marine animals are killed or injured by plastic garbage tossed overboard. We now know that much of the plastic debris comes from our bays and rivers. If we all want a clean ocean, we'll need the help of sports fishermen and recreational users of our inland waterways. So next time, bring back a real trophy. Bring back some plastic trash. Our next story almost feels as if it should begin with Once Upon a Time. It's the story of what happened to a tiny, impoverished Midwestern town when its plight caught the attention of a millionaire businessman. It's the story of David Bolger and his love affair with the tiny town of Fayette, Iowa. David Bolger is a millionaire, a financier and real estate developer who works everywhere from Wall Street to London to Geneva, often in the same week. There she is. Hello, Ruth. How are you? Nice to see you? But when he visits Fayette, Iowa, he's not treated like a tycoon. 
David Bolger is treated like a treasured member of the family. Good morning. How are you? How you doing, partner? Good. 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 You see, Fayette, population 1,500, has become half a million dollars richer thanks to him. We purchased a new police car. Uh, two ambulances, three fire trucks, lights. Uh, they're a gift from the Bolgers. One of the papers quoted David as an angel in Fayette's pocket, and uh, I believe it, and I'm glad he's around. Well, I think it's, I think it's important. It's, it's our heritage to leave something for tomorrow. The extraordinary relationship between big businessman and tiny town began 20 years ago. Back then, David was a chief creditor of the area's biggest employer, and it was on the verge of bankruptcy. In my opinion, there would not be an Upper Iowa University today if it had not been for Dave Bolger. Hey, Ms. Rod, there she is. But instead of foreclosing, he bailed them out, getting the university and the town back on its feet. Since then, he and his wife, Barbara, have put the town back in business, literally, by giving them over 20 investment properties across the country. Now, Fayette's making money from a bank and an office building in Michigan, five supermarkets in Ohio, a can factory in Illinois, a warehouse in Texas, and shoe stores in California. And, uh, golly, a couple hundred thousand dollars came rolling our way, and we said, gee, this is real. This is real money that he's giving us. And with that money, the town took care of some pressing problems. They purchased new vehicles and equipment. City Hall got a facelift. So did the roads, one of which bears David Bolger's name. He's meant a lot to Fayette, and uh, it's improved the quality of life for a lot of people. But the donations aren't all business. When the town folk expressed an interest in having their own beach, David spent $2,500 to bulldoze the riverbank so that tons of sand could be dumped there. The name? Bolger Beach. As soon as you get to that corner at the doctor's office, go past the tennis courts, go one block, and then back to 93 and head straight out to the park. Fayette is worlds away from Wall Street and big business, and that's what David loves about coming here. Things like the weekly community walk are town traditions, and the Bolgers fit in easily. Well, did you see the little girl bring me the bracelet that she made this morning and asked me if I'd wear it? If she ties it on, it means friendship forever. And I don't think you can ask for much more than that to have a town take you into their hearts like this town has. Lord, we give thanks for your guidance in time past. For the blessings of years we count together for our being together in this place. The ties between David Bolger and Fayette only get stronger with time. His most recent gift was helping to bankroll a metal fabrication plant that could mean a whole new way of life for this farming community. Because I think that's going to supply the economic base, a future for Fayette. It used to be you needed a, a large family to run 80 to 160 acres, and now one man can do 2,000 acres, just not jobs on the farm uh, for all our people. Well, economically, it's a godsend. I don't think I would be around here if there wasn't an opportunity like this. There are others who feel the same way. Home improvement loans are in demand now, and the sale of homes is up. We've just seen a, a great improvement in attitude, people wanting to do things, and. Uh, just make the community and the town a little bit better. I mean, this town is alive, it's well, it's, it's energetic. The people are all friendly. It's just, uh, it's just changed everything in this area. It's really great. David says that his gifts aren't charity. They are a good investment in good people who have taken his generosity and built on it. In the end, David Bolger has given them some things that money can't buy, inspiration and pride. It gives you a feeling of accomplishment that you've provided uh, a legacy. David says he does such generous acts because good deeds are what his parents taught him to do and that it's his way of giving something back. David, by the way, is honorary mayor of Fayette and his wife is the honorary police chief. I'm nobody's fashion slave. I won't throw out my whole wardrobe just because Paris comes out with something new. I go to Willow Grove Park. I splurge on the ultimate dress, pick out a killer suit, and then I update the look of my tried and trues with a new scarf, a belt, or oh, I am crazy about shoes. For me, it's the only way to go shopping.
Check your mailbox or newspaper this week for ShopRite's fabulous cashback circular. In addition to ShopRite's low sale prices, you can save over $50 with cashback mail-in rebate offers. Buy the sale-priced items at ShopRite and then mail in your register receipts and proofs of purchase for each offer. When you're ready, make just one mailing and you'll get one big rebate check back from ShopRite. Get up to $50 with ShopRite's cashback circular. Just one more way, ShopRite does it right. <laughs> Every year, thousands of babies die from choking, suffocating, or other breathing emergencies. Just imagine how many of them could be saved if only they came with instructions. Please learn American Red Cross Infant and Child CPR. American Red Cross. We help you help others. Have you ever noticed that kids don't listen to what we say? They listen to what we do. Too many of them think it's okay to drink and drive because too many of us think it's okay. Don't you think it's time we parents grew up and stopped asking our children to do what we're not willing to do? The more you know about kids, the more you know that if we don't want them to start drinking and driving, we're gonna have to stop. There was a time in Hollywood when drugs were a way of life. But now the party may be over. It's very hip to be sober in Hollywood these days. Real hip. Tomorrow it's a look at celebrities kicking the habit and Joan Rivers on being a survivor. I think the gods look down and say, oh yeah? You think you're a survivor? Well, survive this one, honey. Joan Rivers on fame. I'll walk to the airport and I'll go, Joan Collins! And I always go, right. Joan Rivers on being an executive. I am a lady executive. I am Leona Helmsley. All tomorrow. And that's it for us tonight. I'm Jerry Panicoli. Ray Murray will be back here tomorrow. Have a great evening, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow at 5.30 on Eyewitness News. Bye-bye. Caption, very important to me because it allowed me to know what's happening in sports. I feel like now that we have closed captioning, we're equal with hearing people. I mean, I can understand what's going on. I'm thrilled with closed captioning. I feel like I'm alive again. Eyewitness News and U.S. Healthcare continuing our commitment to the hearing impaired. Thank you. Closed captioning for Nightcast is brought to you by a grant from U.S. Healthcare. Watch Eyewitness News weeknights at 11. Yeah, I was looking for love. Uh, but once I found it, I couldn't stay with it. I had to move on. 700 women? That's really not a lot of women. Don Juan and the women who love them on the next Geraldo. Geraldo, tomorrow at 4. Beverly's back. Monday, September 18th. Eyewitness News, weeknights 6 and 11. KYW-TV, Channel 3.